What do most modern professional musicians have in common? Well, for one thing, most of them have learned to harness the wide variety of sounds that are available to them when using an electric guitar. From breathtaking solos at the Lollapalooza Festival to delicate melodies that are playing in the background at your local coffee shop, the electric guitar does it all. Modern electric guitars come in many different shapes and sizes, and often they resemble works of art more than they do musical instruments. But what most people don't realize is that an electric guitar is a relatively simple machine that people with basic woodworking skills can build at home on their own with a few tips. My name is Sean Tootle, and a few years ago I attended Lutheran School in Phoenix, Arizona. While I was there, I learned to build many different types of instruments, both acoustic and electric. After graduating, I moved to Los Angeles, California, and started working as a professional luthier there. I specialized in building lap steels for, per for professional musicians, but I wasn't limited to just that. But for today, we're going to take a look at the electric guitar and, and some of the different components that one needs to build one at home. We're going to talk about wood selection. We're going to talk about component selection, the assembling of the parts, and the finishes. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the body of the guitar. <clears throat> guitar bodies are usually constructed of mahogany or ash. In this case, I've used mahogany. As you can see, mahogany has a dark brown color. Ash, on the other hand, is more similar to maple in its color, and it's quite a bit lighter physically than mahogany is. As you can see, this is a bit of a boring picture, so most luthiers will also put a top on a guitar, such as this. In this case, I used flame maple, and flame maple gets its name from this, this flamed or ribbing that you can see here in the wood. It's worth noting that you can see a mirror image in the wood here, and this is achieved by a process called book matching. And book matching is when a board is split down the middle, perpendicular to the grain, and then opened like a book and placed on the top of the guitar, creating this, this mirror image. Next, the neck is constructed usually of of maple and in this case ebony, but any hardwood can be used for a neck. I chose ebony because of its extreme durability and I just simply like the way it looks. Next, there are components to an electric guitar which are made up of, for this example, a stop tailpiece and a bridge, but also a pickup and tuning machines as you see here. So, let's look at the construction. Usually the body comes first. The body is, the main part of the body is constructed by using a single slab of wood, as you see here, or a few pieces glued together. That also works fine. What happens is the body is put together, and before the top is put on, you see there's a cable here that goes from the pickup to the output jack. There needs to be a channel routed out using a router such as this to accommodate that cable before we put the top on. So once that channel is routed out, then we take a book matched maple top and we glue it to the top of, of the mahogany. And once that's done, then a plexiglass template is placed on top of the wood and using a router once again, the shape is routed out in exactly the form that we want. The next thing that we need to look at are the different cavities that need to be in the body of the guitar. In this case, it's the neck pocket and the pickup cavity. To make the pickup cavity, we use a plexiglass template such as this and we place it on top of the guitar, like so. And once again, using the router, we route out the cavity. Then, to make the neck pocket, we make a very, very exact template of this part of the neck here, and we place it on top of the guitar body just the same way as we did for the pickup cavity. 
then we route it out. We need to have a nice tight fit for the neck, otherwise the guitar rattles around and it just generally doesn't play very well. But I'll demonstrate the tightness of the fit later. Next, we need to construct the neck. In constructing the neck, usually the slots are cut into the fingerboard first, and once that's done, then the fingerboard is glued on to, in this case, the, ma the maple neck blank. Once those two parts are glued together, then using a router and a bandsaw and a lot of sandpaper, the neck gets its shape and form like so. <clears throat> Although most luthiers make their own necks, it can be a little bit tricky. If you're a little bit inexperienced and you're not sure if you really want to invest the time and the money into specialized tools, or for example in my case you only want to build one guitar, it would be wise to consider buying a prefabricated neck. Prefabricated necks, such as this one, are of very, very high quality and they can be delivered as neck blanks so you can cut your own headstock shape into it as I've done here. The last operation is to drill, using a drill press, the holes that accommodate the tuners. And we'll look at that in just a few minutes. So, once I've got these things all constructed, the next thing that I need to do is install the hardware. First of all, I would install the pickup. And I'm not going to put the whole pickup in here, I'm just going to put the pickup cover to demonstrate the fit. As you can see, it should fit quite snugly, as this one does. Then, using the hole that we, that we drilled out to accommodate our bridge and our stop tailpiece, would be installed. So, <clears throat> so, given that these things are all attached, then we can attach the neck. And the neck is attached just like this, and then using the screws, we would screw them in. But as you can see, we've got a nice tight fitting neck joint here, and it holds without the screws being screwed in. The last thing is to install the tuners. And the tuning machines are placed through the hole that we pre-drilled here. And using the attached screw, they're screwed on just like that. And they're adjustable and then you can lock them into place using another screw. <coughs> About finishes. In the past, most guitar builders used nitrocellulose lacquer but it's become less common due to environmental concerns. These days, most people use a water-based lacquer, and especially in small shops, they can put in hand-rubbed lacquers or also oils. Whatever you choose, um, just make sure that you get a nice, even finish to it. So, once everything's done, then we can move to what's called the setup. And the setup is the adjustment of the neck, and the testing of the electronics to make sure that everything works right and generally the guitar is, has good playability. In order to do this properly, I suggest buying a book. For example, The, Gu the Guide to Guitar Repair by Dan Erwelein. In his book, Dan Erwelein gives lots of illustrations on how to, how to set up your, your guitar in a step-by-step -step process. Altogether, I recommend having it for any guitar player, not just those who want to build a guitar. So, let's review what we've talked about. We've talked about the wood selection and where it goes. We've talked about the component construction, the body and the neck. We've talked about the different pieces of hardware that are involved, for example, the stock tailpiece, the tuners, the pickup, etc. We've talked about assembling them, and we've talked about finishes and setups. So, in conclusion, even if you don't ever decide to build your own guitar at home, by now you should be able to identify the different parts of the guitar and how they're fitting, how they fit together.